I'd like to turn the mic and the stage and the floor over to the great Vince Flory. Vince? All right, thank you, Dennis. And uh, it's great to see everybody come out today. It's uh, exciting to see such a good turnout for our inaugural meeting of Oakland County Campaign for Liberty. As Dennis mentioned, we'll be talking about uh, gun rights and uh, gun laws. There's uh, a lot going on with that currently. So uh, I see John has the PowerPoint loaded. So uh, President Obama's re-election in uh, November of last year set the stage for an advancement of an agenda contrary to our American tradition and uh, way of life, that being freedom. One significant component in that is uh, the advancement of gun control laws. These have always been on the back burner, uh, you know, kind of waiting in the wings for the opportune moment. Well, the shooting rampage at Sandy Hook Elementary School back in December provided the catalyst to move that issue off the back burner and right into the limelight. And the American mainstream media is playing right along with it. Every, uh, every little uh, talking point that the left comes out with, they pair it. And uh, it's, a, it's a great battle that we have engaged in. Go ahead, John. So, <clears throat> you might ask, what is the left proposing? And one, uh, one thing is uh, a ban of most semi-automatics, and they might, <clears throat> they might say assault weapons, which could bring about the question, what is an assault weapon? Well, an assault weapon is kind of an invented term, which uh, confuses people. An assault rifle is a fully automatic machine gun, which military uses to uh, make an assault on an enemy encampment. So, <clears throat> The uh, semi-automatic versions of those look similar, but they fire one round every time you pull the trigger, just like uh, an old-fashioned revolver. Now, revolvers have kind of fallen out of vogue. <clears throat> Semi-automatics are a little bit more technologically up-to-date, <clears throat> and they're the most popular uh, action type of firearms that are sold. Second item, <clears throat> which is proposed, is a ban on the transfer of course, they'd like to get rid of the possession altogether, but they kind of settled on, well, ban on transferring high-capacity magazines. Initially, <clears throat> as was done in our, our past uh, assault weapons ban, which sunsetted and, uh, and went away, they said, let's go after magazines which are more than 10 rounds. And uh, some people, like uh, our illustrious mayor of New York City, but, ah, oh, 10 rounds, that's still too many. We've got to ratchet that down to 7 rounds. Nobody needs more than 7 rounds capacity. Of course, that depends on how many bad guys are, are trying to bust down your door in the middle of the night. How many rounds do you need? Well, you're not always going to hit your target. And uh, if you do hit your target, that first shot may not be uh, completely effective in stopping that bad guy. So, how many rounds do you need is all subjective <clears throat> based on your situation. The third thing is uh, universal background checks on all sales and transfers. And the uh, mainstream media and the left like to say, gosh, everybody's in favor of this. This is common sense. You couldn't even oppose this if, uh, if you were a genius. Well, <clears throat> currently, you need a background check to purchase a firearm from a federal firearms dealer. And uh, they like to bring out uh, a little uh, Catchphrase, gun show loophole. I did it. So they say gun show loophole. We need to close the gun show loophole. Well, the gun show loophole is that <clears throat> federal firearms dealers at a gun show have to obey all the laws just as if they're set up in their shop. They have to get a background check on any buyer. <clears throat> However, uh, Michigan Antique Arms Association has a uh, fine show out no buy of year, and if you're a collector, and say you want to get out of 1940s Mausers and get into uh, U.S. military guns, well, you can set up a table with your old Mausers, sell them off, you don't have to be a dealer. Well, <clears throat> you don't need a background check because you're not a dealer. So the proposal is universal background checks. Now, what's kind of uh, sneakily hidden in the background of that is if everybody's going through a background check and filling out a form, then those forms are all 
kind of a backdoor way of registering everybody's guns. And uh, registration, as has been shown in the past, leads to confiscation of guns. <clears throat> Juice for the preservation of firearms ownership has some excellent write-ups on this. And they show that uh, throughout history, when uh, guns are registered, it's not really too long before they come along and want to take guns away. In fact, we don't have to go back in time that far. We can go to New York State uh, in the most recent few months. New York State has uh, registration of uh, firearms, and uh, they uh, just passed a law in the state saying that uh, if you are reported by your psychiatrist to be on drugs like uh, uh, Paxil or Prozac, then uh, you are crazy and you shouldn't have a firearm, so you have to go turn them all in. And uh, this is kind of a rude awakening for a lot of people that registration leads to confiscation. So, we know what the left is, is going after, those uh, few items. And there was a, uh, a vote in the Senate, and our hero, Rand Paul, led a uh, filibuster against opening discussion or, or debate on the gun control issue. And he was joined by some other fine senators, uh, Ted Cruz, for instance, and a couple others. But uh, eventually, we lost the... Uh... <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, we got, we got plenty of seats still. So uh, we lost the, uh, the filibuster and uh, the uh, discussion on gun control opened in the U.S. Senate. So that was a, a small loss, but uh, we won the vote on the bill itself. And uh, that was very significant. It's a very big setback to uh, Obama and uh, his Confederates in, uh, in uh, trying to ban guns. This appears not to be a victory, though, but a temporary setback. <clears throat> the left now is relentlessly hammering senators who voted uh, what we would consider in the right way, the pro-freedom way, and uh, trying to uh, convince them that they should change their vote <clears throat> should this issue uh, be successfully uh, brought back to the floor. So you might say, hey, don't I have rights? They can't do this. Michigan Constitution says every person has a right to bear arms for the defense of himself and the state. Gosh, that's very straightforward. That's uh, not even as confusing as the, uh, as the one uh, to our U.S. Constitution. It doesn't mention the militia or defense of the state. Uh, well, it does mention defense of the state, but it says you've got a right to the defense of yourself. <clears throat> In addition, we have U.S. Constitution Second Amendment. I think uh, most of us know what that says, but uh, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. A lot of people get really confused on that because they probably didn't have good English classes. But uh, if you boil that down to uh, the simplest form of the sentence, the right shall not be infringed. All the rest of that is modifiers. And uh, that's lost on a lot of uh, people who don't have clear-headed thinking. So these are specific rights to arms. However, all of the rights apply, such as property rights, if they want to take away your guns, how's that different from taking away any other valuable? Doesn't the state have to pay you for that? Well, that's not done. They take them away, say thank you very much, and it's your loss. Freedom from unreasonable search and seizure. You know, if you registered those guns in good faith, should they be able to use that against you? No. All right, but your rights, <clears throat> all those rights that we do have, are only good to us if people lay claim to them and defend them against encroachment. So right now, we have an action item. We need to apply pressure to our U.S. Senators, not only our U.S. Senators, but those who can be swayed, those who are waffling and say, well, we supported you last time, maybe we won't this time. And uh, those are people that we can contact and uh, try to educate and, uh, and win them over to uh, staying uh, on the right side of the vote. Also, we should thank those who voted right with us last time. It's always good when you get out and say, hey, thank you very much. We appreciate voting with us, uh, voting the right way. 
Michigan's U.S. Senators, Carl Levin and Debbie Stabenow. <laughs> Who is? <laughs> they both love gun control laws. So I'm not sure how much good it does to contact our two U.S. Senators. It can never hurt to contact your senator and let them know. If they get enough pressure, that might uh, sway them to uh, back off a little bit and, uh, and uh, try and do the right thing. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably get some form letters. But they know this when people are paying attention, and, uh, and that's, that's a good thing. So not only our senators, but, uh, but others as well. So also, uh, President Obama is trying to trash gun rights by an executive order. Kind of like uh, Congress, we don't need nothing in Congress. We'll just do this my way. Department of Health and Human Services has drafted regulations which would waive federal privacy laws and encourage your doctor to report you to the FBI. And if uh, they can report you, and uh, they have any doubt whether you might go off and do some violent incident, well, they'll just you know report everybody, and then uh, they're covered. They won't get sued in the future if anything does happen. So that's always a risk. There are you know millions of people on uh, SSRI drugs which are in the Paxil and Prozac family. And uh, they consider that to be uh, bad for gun rights. So instead of going after these bad drugs, let's go after the guns. Kind of a crazy way of thinking. So this is a nationwide expansion of the actions taken in New York State, which uh, talked about a minute ago. And uh, this method has also been used, and this is noteworthy, to disarm 165,000 veterans. Veterans come back from uh, uh, being deployed. They, uh, they have issues, uh, anxiety, uh, trouble sleeping. You know, they go to get some uh, psychiatric help, and uh, they get blacklisted from owning firearms. Uh, this, is, this is not good, and it's permanent blacklisting. There's no way to get them back once you lose these rights. So that's a bad thing as well. So Gun Owners of America <clears throat> has a page uh, talking about this issue. It's got great detail on opposing this expansion of, uh, of this uh, way of thinking. Uh, you can make comments on the pending regulations, and this is uh, good till I think, June 4th. So that's action item number two. One, go for your U.S. senators, tell them to oppose uh, bills coming up to restrict your gun rights. And then uh, second, you can uh, make comments on this health and human services bill, <coughs> or regulation that's pending, it's not a bill. Kansas has just done a wonderful thing. They passed a law nullifying, nullifying all U.S. firearms laws. Now this uh, didn't sit well with the Obama administration, so Attorney General Eric Holder pinned a letter to Kansas making all kinds of threats against them for, uh, for this law and uh, saying, well, our federal agents are going to be enforcing the law. You, know, you, can't, you can't have that kind of restriction. You can't threaten to throw them in jail for for uh, illegal, unconstitutional action. But, remarkably, Kansas is not backing down. So they got some right-headed thinking to, uh, to counter the wrong-headed thinking of uh, Eric Holder. This uh, state nullification approach is gaining a significant foothold. And uh, I believe Kansas is the fourth or fifth state which has passed bills uh, nullifying federal gun laws. So I think this is, uh, this is a good trend and uh, one that we should encourage. And we should think about doing this in Michigan. It would be a great thing to, uh, to work on in addition to some of the other nullification work that I think Shane will be talking about. Some key groups. Uh, I mentioned Gun Owners of America, uh, also National Association for Gun Rights, uh, National Rifle Association. Um, they got to be kept on a short leash. Yeah. They, uh, uh, they seem to be doing all right this time, but in the past they've sold out gun owners and that's part of why we have uh, some of the registration and background checks that we currently do. Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, I mentioned, they, they have some great work uh, explaining that uh, you know once you lose your guns, uh, a lot of times bad, bad things happen and uh, the state can become very tyrannical and, uh, and wipe out a lot of citizens. On the state level, we have Michigan Gun Owners, Michigan Citizens for Responsible Gun Ownership, and Michigan Carry, Michigan Open Carry. They all do great work uh, trying to advance our state laws, make it 
better for us carrying, better for us buying, and uh, I think those are all great organizations. New York Rifle and Pistol Association, I mentioned because of what's going on in New York State, uh, they would be a good, uh, a good uh, site to visit. And then of course the 10th Amendment Center, as, uh, as long advocated by uh, Dennis Barberger and Shane Trail, it's another great group, they're working on the uh, nullification end of things. A little bit of Indian wisdom here to finish up with. <laughs> Leave you with a smile. Thank you very much. <laughs>